long time for applause. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> Um, unless you're a grumpy cat, then you can applause, no problem. Uh, so, I'm Frederik van der Hitte, I'm a developer and a co-owner at a Belgian company called Spasi. Uh, our company has a big heart for open source, we released a lot of packages, uh, especially for the Laravel ecosystem, and we give you a big list on our site. Uh, I'll be joined a little bit later by my friend Marcel. Uh, he is a developer and a co-owner of a German company called Space, uh, Beyond Code, sorry. <laughs> Nerds. And they also do a lot of open source stuff. So uh, you can find a big list of their packages on their GitHub uh, repository. So I want to talk about our secret project. Some of you might have heard of this. We may have hyped it uh, a little bit. So how did we come here? So Marcel and I previously if we combine all of our figures, we released 300 packages and they have been downloaded for 50 million times now, which Woo! is really awesome. Yeah! Thank you. <laughs> and there is one that we created together, the Laravel WebSockets package, which is basically an entire uh, server-side implementation of WebSockets uh, written in PHP, it's very easy to use, and we had a blast creating that one together. And we were thinking, now what? What are we going to do? So, in the beginning of this year, Marcel and I were tossing around a few ideas. And I'm not going to tell you all of them, because we might do some of them in the future. But there's one that we settled on. And the one that we settled on, and the one thing that we thought, hey, we can improve this in PHP, is error handling. So, let's take a look at what we have with error handling right now in PHP. If you don't use a framework, this is an error that you might see. So, it is the exception message, you know where it, uh, where it occurred, but you don't have any figure regarding like uh, the request or your application. It isn't that helpful. Now, the Symfony error page is already a little bit better. So, we have a stack trace, so you know that how the code flowed before uh, there was an exception. But you don't know anything about the request and you don't have any context information. Now, who has seen this page before? Everybody, right? Yeah, so this is the whoops page and it's the default in Laravel. And whoops is a framework agnostic page, so there's nothing about your Laravel application here. So you have like your message, you have a code snippet, you have a little bit about your request, but nothing about your Laravel package. So Marcel and I thought, hey, what would happen if we created a Laravel specific error page? And that's just what we've done. This is how it looks like. It's an entire re rebuild of, uh, of Whoops. Uh, it will become the default error page in Laravel 6. We have uh, made lots of Laravel specific niceties to it. And to tell you all about it, I'd like to invite him on stage, my friend Marcel. Hey. Nice to be here. Alright, so time for some demo. So let's switch to Chrome. So this is how an error looks like with Ignition. Ignition is a beautiful error page for your level applications. And let me walk you through some of the features. So just to give you give away the most important feature right from the beginning. Yep, we have <laughs> Alright. So when you have an error in your level application, you see the first thing you see is that we have the frames in your stack trace, but we show you all of them. So the vendor frames are collapsed by default, so you only see the frames that actually happen inside of your application, but you can easily expand and collapse those frames as you want. Uh, next, let's focus a bit on this specific exception. So this is an exception that happened in one of my views, and if you ever had one of those exceptions with whoops, you know how painful it is to debug those. So let's see how this same exception looks like in books. So there's a lot of stuff going on there. 
Uh, what I want you to focus on is this part here at the top. So this is the code snippet that Whoops has given me to help me figure out what is going wrong with my code. And as you can see, this is no longer Blade. So this is the PHP code that the Blade compiler from Laravel made out of my view. Um, and this is quite hard, especially if your views are differently structured, to figure out where the actual error is from. So with Ignition, we kind of do what you would expect from it. So as you can see, the exception happens inside this links.blade.php font. So we tell you right away the view that your error happened in. And if you take a look at the code snippet, we show you the Blade content of your view. So there's no compiled PHP code that you have to de-scramble in your head to figure out what went wrong. And if you take a look at the frames, we can see that this view was included in the welcome view, but down here we show you this as well. So all the frames in the stack trace show you the original content of the views, and I think this is going to help a lot with debugging view exceptions. So let's go a bit over the different tabs that we have here. So the request tab is what you would expect. It's basically what Whoops gave you. So it has all the information about the current request, you see the headers, things like the query parameters, session, cookies. So nothing too special going on here. If we go to the app tab, that's where Ignition hooks more into Laravel and makes use of it. So first off, we show you information about the current route where your exception happened. So we can tell you if it was on a specific controller, in this case it's an enclosure. We show you the route name. And then what's really cool is that we give you the route parameters. So if I show you how this route is defined, it's like this. So I have a route parameter called user, which I'm using model binding to pass a user model to my controller. And on ignition, we see the same thing. So we know that this route has a parameter called user, and then we see the two area representation of this model when my exception happened. And next, we show you a list of all the middlewares that uh, were run when the exception was caused. Now we show you some view-specific information. So here you see the view name. You can also get that from the stack trace. But what's more important is that we show you the view data itself. And this is really helpful if an exception happens, for example, with uh, third-party data, like from your database or from the API call then you do not necessarily know which data was actually passed to the view. So here we just show you right away which data the view got. And this is not only from the controller, but from view composers, parent views. OK. The user tab shows you information about the currently logged in user. So we give you the email, because that's what we think is the most common attribute across user models. And then you get it to array representation of the logged well, uh, in addition, the IP address and the user agent of the browser that you're currently using for this exception. The context tab has additional context information that's not variable specific. So here we see that the commit message that I had checked out locally when this exception occurred was hello there on a view, and then you see the command hash, you can click on it, and it opens GitHub, and you can see. Maybe this is the commit that broke your application locally. And then we show you environment-related information, such as the Laravel version, the locale, if the config file was cached or not, and the PHP version. Last but not least, the debug tab contains a chronological list of debug-related information. This uh, contains queries. So all the queries that were executed before the exception was thrown is displayed here. In addition to those queries, you also get the query binding, so you can see that the ID in this case would have been the one. You see log statements, so whenever you log something, we collect this data and show it to you on the error page in Ignition as well. And then we have dumps. So when you dump something in Whoops, it would have been shown somewhere above here, right at the top before the actual Whoops page would start. In Ignition, we also collect this information and show it to you in this tab. And what's really cool is that we also give you a location. So you can just click on the pencil. Uh, by default, it will go to PHP Storm. You can configure the editor. And then it will just jump in the right file and location for this dump statement.
Okay, so, so those are all the tabs that we have here. Um, and I think this is already going to help you solve your exceptions in a much easier way than with whoops. But we wanted to add some more value to these exceptions. Um, namely, we wanted to provide solutions as well. So let me show how this looks. So here's a very simple exception that I have. Uh, so this is the code. It's post, find or fail, and then the ID. But I made a mistake and forgot to import my post class. So I have this class post.found exception. And the ignition picks up the exception and tries to solve it for you. So we see that the post class was not imported. Then we try to find a relevant class that you should import in this file to actually go and fix this error for you. So those solutions help you with this. Ignition ships with a lot of solutions out of the box. So this is just one example. Another one would be for invalid views. So when you try to load a view, so in this case it would be admin.post.show, but the actual file name was admin.posts.show, then Ignition picks up the exception and tells you where you can find the correct view file. So this is already really cool, I think, but we also wanted to make these solutions runnable. So to give you an example, when you clone a project from GitHub, you probably everyone has seen this exception. You end up having no application encryption key. And once again, Ignition picks up this exception and knows how you can solve this. You have to call PHPRZ key to generate. So you can do this manually and copy it in your terminal, but you can also press this nice button that the solution provides. And with any luck, if I go back, I now have an application key generated by yeah. the solution. <laughs> now if I refresh, I'm back at my previous exception. So those solutions and runnable solutions are added to the ignition, but you can also add these to your own code. So, if I open an exception, and let's say you want to add a solution to an exception in your own code or in your own packages, all you need to do is implement an interface that we ship with the condition called provides a solution on your exception. And then once you throw this exception, you can return a solution. So we have a title, we have a description, and you can add links to it. So you can point the user when an exception comes up to the package documentation, to Laracast, to the official Laravel documentation, you can just link them to where you want. And you can also create runnable solutions. And then if you throw these, it looks like this, and here you have the links for your custom solution. So we have solutions, runnable solutions, you can add your own to your own code base. But what if you want to provide a solution for an exception that's within Laravel, or a, a PHP generic exception where you don't can you can't implement this interface? So that's where something that we call solution providers comes into place. Solution providers can be added to the ignition, and what they do is they have a method that receives the exception when it gets thrown, and then can figure out if it can solve this exception. So for example, you can create a stack overflow solution provider that receives an exception, then you take the exception message, look out on stack overflow if you can find a solution for it, return true or false, and then in the get solutions method, you can return an array of solutions for this specific exception. So by this, ignition just becomes smarter over time and can help with even more exceptions out of the box. So these are the ways on how you can extend the mission to using solutions, but you can also extend the user interface of the mission. Let me see, show you how this works. So we are going to publish open source packages that are completely optional. I installed two of those. Let's go jump to activate them. And what third-party packages can do is they can add custom tabs to the application. So in here I have now a new tab called Tinker, and this gives me the artist of Tinker that we all love in my error page. So here I can press Command Enter, the command runs, and I have my Tinker output right on my exception page. And the 
second option package that we're going to provide is a code editor for your exception. So this replaces the existing stack trace tab with a code mirror editor. So in here I can just go and fix the error right away. Press command S, the file gets saved, if I refresh, we have fixed the error. So if you have some little exceptions, you can fix it right away on your exception page. <laughs> okay, um, so this is all how you can extend your mission. And there's one thing I haven't shown you yet, which is this share button. So you can share your local errors with people on your team, on Slack, you can share it on forums like Veracasts or Stack Overflow, and you can select which pieces of information you want to share from your exception. So for example, I want to share everything but the debug tab. Then when you press share, you get two URLs. One is for the public share, which you can send to anyone else, and the debug tab is gone. And you have another URL that you can use to later delete the share if you no longer want it to be available. Now, as you can see, we are no longer on our local page, but instead we are on a service called Flare. And to tell you all about Flare, let's welcome Flake back on stage. So, to get our wedding vision, which I hope you liked, we created another service, and it's called Flare. Now let me go to the homepage of Flare and tell you all about it. So Flare is a new exception tracker that we built specifically for our Laravel applications. We aim to make it very easy to use, have a calm interface and beautiful looks. It has Laravel specific optimizations in there, and it looks into all the features that Envision introduced today. So I'd like to give you a short tour of it. So let me log in on this uh, German keyboard that is not uncertain, uh, <laughs> which is strange. Let's see, type in my password, and here we are. So here we are on an error page uh, for a project in Flare. And you might recognize these errors. These errors were just sent by the demo application that uh, Marcel used to our service. And you can do already a lot with all these errors that, uh, that occur here. You can uh, resolve them right from, from here to mark, uh, to let your colleagues know that, hey, I fixed this. Uh, and of course, errors will send out notifications to you, but if an error occurs uh, many, many times, you can snooze those notifications for a number of times or for a period. And of course, you can search uh, different errors uh, on top of uh, top of uh, the page with this, this search bar. There are actually a lot of options to search errors and we've uh, all uh, listed them in our documentation. Now these errors, they belong to the Laracom EU uh, project. Let me go to the project space page. We only have one project now. Um, you can of course create many, as many projects as you want. The project is tied to a team or the entire ship of Flare is, uh, is team based. So I can just add a new project here, I'll just call it project. It will let you see easy uh, installation instructions. And we even provide a command that you can uh, run to test out if you followed all these instructions uh, correctly. Now let me head back to the Larcom EU project and click on one of these errors. And if I click on one of the errors, I get information about the latest error occurrence. So the top is just that card that we've just uh, seen. You have all those uh, results, new jobs, news options there as well. And uh, the bottom half should already look very familiar because it has the same look as our ignition page. And we have all the Laravel specific optimizations here as well. So we show you here the uh, uncompiled uh, link bot, and we show you here the uncompiled uh, view. We also have Laravel specific application information in our app. So we have all the routing information, we have all the view now that you remember our service as well. If you want to see all the occurrences, just click all, and you have all the times that this, this error occurred. Of course, you can also group by URL, so you can see that uh, this error occurred five times on this URL, 81 times on this URL. Um, 
let's head back to the narrowest range. You can see here that we have a green uh, light bulb here. That signifies that for this er error, there was a solution. So all the, all the solution information is uh, going to our service as well. Now, let me talk a bit about another uh, thing that's kind of important for an exception tracker, and that is notifications. So we can send you notifications on a few, uh, on a few levels. So we have uh, notifications that you can configure personally on a team basis and specific on a project basis. I'm not going to go into details now because it would take us too long. Um, we can send you notifications via email, via Slack, via SMS through Nexmo, and of course webhooks, so you can uh, do whatever you either in your application uh, using our events. And you can send out events uh, after it first occurred or after the first 10, 100 or 1000 occurrence. We can send you a notification after it has been marked as resolved, but there's still a new one coming in. Uh, we also can notify you when it is resolved and when it has been snoozed. We try to make these notifications as powerful as possible. And I want to uh, show you one of them, which is the uh, uh, Slack notification. And if I take a look at the notification that was just sent to us, you can see that an error really occurred. We have here that uncompiled view uh, again. It can resolve or snooze it right from within Slack. And of course, if I hunt one dial, if there's like a notification coming in and um, the exception has a solution, we display the solution right in the, in the notification you get. Um, there's one more bit that I'd like to show you, and that is that we have a share that here as well. So if you want to uh, let somebody outside your team help you with a uh, certain exception, you can, like on our admission page, just tell which apps should be shared, just create a share, it will uh, generate a hard to guess URL where your exception will live on and you can just share that with whoever can help you with this. Um, because you are logged into the service and we know that it's tied to a project, we can uh, delete it from here, but you can also um, go to the right page. If you want to see all the shares of a certain project, you can go to project settings, the share, and here you can see which uh, errors have been shared by the web. So this is just a little tour of Flare. There's a lot of cool stuff going on there as well, but we only have, have so much time. So I'm going to close off the presentation. So we've shown you two things today. And the first one is Ignition and that is a modern new error page for Laravel. It will be the default in Laravel 6, but you can install it into Laravel 5.5 and up uh, projects as well. And the sharing errors that Marcel showed you from the ignition page, we do that for free. Now, if everything went well, then the colleague at my office just made the repository public so you can visit the source code uh, in that uh, GitHub repository. I've also written an extensive blog post uh, about Ignition. Uh, I'll publish it on my blog as soon as I walk off the stage here. Now, the second thing that we've shown you is Flare. And Flare is a new Laravel-specific error tracker. It integrates perfectly with all the features introduced uh, with Ignition. And everybody can try it out. We have a free trial for uh, seven days. And the application lives on the Flare app called IO uh, domain. Now, there's a waiting list active. Uh, you can already subscribe to the waiting list. We will let the first users in this Monday, and we will probably let everybody in in the next couple of weeks. Now, this is the pricing for, uh, for Flare. It has two variants, namely the number of errors you're going to send us and the time that we have to keep them, so the data retention. Um, I suggest you just stick with the standard if you don't know how many errors you're going to get and just upgrade if it is necessary. All of these plans have unlimited users and projects. These are the prices per month, but per year you basically get one uh, month for free. Now, this project has been a labor of love uh, by Beyond Code and Spassi, 
and Marcel and I may be public figures of our companies, but we couldn't have done this without the help of our entire team. We're not going to stop here, we're going to add some nice features. And the first ones that we are going to add is here, support for JavaScript errors. And we also will add support for commenting on the share pages, so you can easily communicate with the people that can help you fix your error. We also hope that there will be uh, some interest from the community support to help us create good solutions for, uh, for common environmental problems. We've got some very cool solutions in there as well, but we can't do this without community support. And I can't wait to see which custom tabs that you can come up with. So I'd like to invite uh, Marcel uh, back on stage. Um, I hope that you like uh, what you've seen. I hope you made Grumpy Cat ready, uh, happy wherever he sits. Uh, we have stickers for those that, uh, that want it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.